Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. If you love me, you will let me do this. How many husbands have heard those words come from their wives' mouths? Those were the words that my wife said to me, over what had started out as a romantic dinner to celebrate our fifth anniversary. And then my world pretty much went to hell. So how did we get to this point? My very good-looking 29-year-old wife has just revealed to me that she wants to have sex with other men outside our marriage. She said it, plain and simple. At least it was plain and simple to me. I had planned a great dinner out at one of our favorite restaurants that was a higher-end place with actual white tablecloths and a decent wine list. I even bought her a diamond necklace that I knew she wanted from all the hints that she had dropped since her birthday. I spent almost a thousand dollars on that damn necklace and now I have to get my money back. During the meal I sensed that she was nervous about something and our normal relaxed conversation was, well, forced to a degree. She looked distracted. She looked nervous about something. Her eyes were darting about the room like she was looking for something or someone. She normally looked me in the eyes when she talked to me, but tonight, she was looking at the table, her wine glass, just about anywhere else than at me. Finally, after we had eaten the main course and were having another glass of wine, she got around to what she wanted to really talk about. Honey, I need to tell you something that has been bothering me. It's been on my mind for a while now, and I need to do something about it. I stopped and put my wine glass down. What was she talking about? The tone of her voice got low. That was the voice that she used when she wanted to talk about something that she was serious about. What was it that was bothering her? My brain immediately thought that she might be going to tell me that she was ready to start talking about starting a family. We had talked about it before, several times in fact over the last three years, but had decided to delay having children until we had achieved more success in our professional careers and saved a bigger nest egg to take care of the cost of having a child. Well, we had done that, and I was keen to get on with making us a bigger family. Was she ready? I was sure hoping that this is what she wanted to talk about. But her lack of eye contact told me that maybe that wasn't it. If you want to talk about making babies normally, you might have a big foolish grin on your face and make nothing but eye contact. What the hell was going on? Honey, I want to do something that I'm not sure that you're going to agree with right now, but it is something that I have thought about very carefully and it's kind of important to me. My wife of five years, Andrea, swallowed and said, I need to explore my life outside of our relationship. I need to have some freedom to explore who I am and through that I know that it will allow me to be a better wife for you. Huh. What? To say that I was confused, mystified, upset, angry. Well, I was all of those to varying degrees at the same time. What the fuck? Dear, what are you talking about? I put my hands on the table palms down and looked her square in the eyes as I said that. My face had my puzzled look. She avoided looking at me as she replied, I need to explore other relationships besides you, Rob. I want your agreement beforehand so that you don't get upset and all weird when I do. My blood pressure was now starting to go up exponentially and I could feel the veins in my neck pushing against my shirt collar. Just what kind of relationships are you talking about, Andrea? Well, I suppose they might be with all kinds of people. My confusion was increasing every second as my breathing became labored and my lungs were refusing to take in air. Could you be a tad more specific, please? I said with a direct tone and as I held my breath, Well, I think I might want to see some other men. What the fuck are talking about, Andrea? You want to have an affair and you want me to agree to it before you run out and have sex with other men? Jesus Christ. My voice was going up in volume and some of the other diners at the restaurant could probably hear what I had just said. Keep your voice down, honey. There is no need to have everyone hear what we are talking about. I realized that she wanted to spring this little tidbit of news on me here in a public place so that I wouldn't scream at her. She ambushed me all right. Got me good. I wanted to throw up that expensive supper right then and there. My stomach was in a giant knot. The only thing I could think to say was, why? Why do you want to see other men, Andrea? Well, I think I need the space to explore myself. Explore yourself. What the fuck does that mean, Andrea? Are you saying you want to go and have sex with other men? Are you leaving me? No, dear. I'm not leaving you. There are a lot of reasons why I need to do this. But believe me, I love you very much and you are my soulmate. I want us to have a family and grow old together. But right now, I need to feel certain things that I'm not feeling right now. And I want your permission to explore those things. That's all. It would only be for a few months and then I would be yours. And only yours, Rob. Your wife again. I promise. Okay, this was pretty much the worst possible thing that my simple mind could imagine. My wife of five years has announced during our anniversary dinner that she wants to be able to have sex with other men. 
She wants me to sit idly by and agree to all this, and then she promises to resume our marriage at some point when she feels fulfilled, as if nothing has happened, but she will be a better wife for having done that. I was stunned. Speechless. I had no response. My brain was dead. My lungs could not draw air. I stood up, carefully put my napkin on the table, picked up my wine glass and drank what was left in it, carefully put the glass down, then turned and walked out of the restaurant. Honey, where are you going? I don't know, but I think you need to take a cab home. I walked out of the restaurant and found my car, started the engine, put it in gear, and then just drove. I had no idea where I was going. My head was splitting open as the pain that started in the back of my head seemed to move to just about every part of it. I lost track of time and where I was. The next morning when I woke up in the car, I didn't recognize the place where I was. I got out of the car and stretched my arms and yawned. I tried to recall what had happened last night thinking that it was all a bad dream. I needed to take a piss in the worst way and then get a giant cup of coffee. I knew that I needed to figure out what I needed to do before I went home. I took a piss in the bushes a few yards from my car and then got back in my car, started the engine and took off in search of that coffee that I needed. I found a small diner and got some breakfast to go with the coffee and began thinking about how I was going to approach this problem. I couldn't just let my wife go out and start fucking other men. No. That would be the end of our marriage for sure. Even with what she told me last night, I was beginning to think that she wasn't the woman that I thought she was. Maybe she's had a nervous breakdown and was fantasizing some shit that was disconnected from reality. I didn't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. Just a very confused husband. I checked my cell phone and discovered that I had turned it off at some point last night. When it turned on, I had several text messages and missed phone calls from Andrea. She wanted to know where I was, was I alright, and when was I coming home. At this point I figured that I never wanted to go home, but I knew that I had to sometime today. I didn't return her call or text message. Over several cups of coffee and some eggs and bacon I came up with a rough plan of what I needed to do. Time to go home. When I pulled in the driveway of our house, Andrea opened the front door and came out to meet me. Honey, where have you been all night? I was worried sick about you. I thought that you had an accident and might be in a ditch somewhere. She tried to kiss me, but I pulled away and told her, Andrea. I'm going to take a shower and get cleaned up, and then you and I are going to talk. We need to talk about your plan of exploring yourself as you told me last night. I pushed past her and went up to the bedroom and got out of the suit that I had spent the night in. I took a long hot shower and reviewed part of what I wanted to tell her. I wasn't sure how it would go, but I had to do something to see if I still had a wife or was this her way of saying goodbye. Maybe this was just a test on her part to see what my commitment was to her. I had no idea what was going on in her head. I thought I loved her. Shit, I married her. She even told me that she loved me. We had a big wedding and took a trip to Europe to celebrate. I don't think about other women and have not cheated on her. Never. But she doesn't seem to want to do the same. No, sir. Thankfully, we don't have any children. Maybe we wouldn't at all. That would be determined by what would happen in the next days and weeks. After I got in some clean clothes, I went to the kitchen and made myself another cup of coffee and got a notepad and pen. Andrea was in the kitchen sitting at the island. She was watching me closely. I tried to look calm, but inside I was a mess. I got my coffee and sat down. Okay, Andrea, tell me again why you want to have relationships outside our marriage. Honey, I need to feel validation as a woman. I don't feel like my needs are being met right now. I need to be able to find out what my needs are see if I can find that fulfillment on my own. So, as of now you do not know what are your needs, and you need to find out your needs. Also, are you leaving me? for a while, to find out what it is you want. No, honey, I'm not going to leave. I will stay right here in our home with you, but I need to be able to have my own schedule and do things when I want to do them. When do you want to start your exploration and your new schedule, Andrea? Well, I suppose any time would be fine. Do you agree with letting me do this? No, I don't agree with any of this nonsense, Andrea. When we got married, we told each other then that we would be partners and lovers for life. Now you want to go and find other lovers. What the fuck am I supposed to think? I think that you want out of our marriage. Honey, it's not like that. I need to find a connection that you and I have not had for a couple of years now. Everything we do is work, work, work. We don't play as much as we used to. I don't feel like you appreciate me the way that you did when we got married. Appreciate you? Jesus, everything I do is for you. I have been working my ass off so that we can afford to have a family and have all the things that we talked about when we got married. This house is almost paid for, for crying out loud. 
I was starting to get angry and worked up and had to dial it back a bit otherwise I was going to lose my temper and that would not work out at all. Are you going to have sex with other men? This was the showstopper. So I had to get it right out in the open first before anything else. Honey, I don't know yet what I'll be doing. I might want to have sex with someone if it is the right thing to do with the right person. So you were planning on cheating on me. It's not cheating on you, Rob. It's not cheating if you know about it. Oh, fuck. My blood pressure was skyrocketing at that point, and I had to take a deep breath and exhale slowly in order to stay focused. I see. I waited for a moment and took a long drink of my coffee wishing it were something a lot stronger. I needed to get a grip on my emotions and get this done. So, let me get this straight, Andrea. You plan to go out and meet other men, date them, and probably have sex with them. You also plan to still stay here at home while you do that. Have I got it correct so far? Honey, it's not that simple. I don't know. Seems pretty simple to me, Andrea. Are you planning for us to do anything together during that time? You are still a married woman, you know. Are we just putting our marriage on hold for a while? Are you thinking that you and I will still have sex while you are doing this? Of course, Rob. We are a family. You and me. I love you very much and want us to continue to be a family. This will just be something that I do from time to time to see what I need for me. Just how often are you going to do this, Andrea? Every weekend? Twice a week on weekdays? Every night? How much are you going to explore? I don't know just yet, honey. Why are you so concerned about that? Well, I need to work out what it is I'm going to do while you are off meeting, dating and having sex with your new boyfriends. I don't have a boyfriend, honey, at least not yet. I took a deep breath and slowly let it out. I was about to blow a gasket and had to work really hard not to break something just then. Andrea, I want to get some things right in my mind before we leave here today. Have you really made up your mind that this is what you want to do? Have you thought about what this will do to our marriage? Andrea nodded her head but didn't actually answer my question. I figured that she hadn't given a lot of thought to how I might feel about all this. She hadn't thought that I might have opinions about what she wanted to do. And then she said it. If you love me, you will let me do this. I fired back. If you love me, Andrea, you will not do this. This was my line in the proverbial sand. Honey, I've made up my mind that this is what I'm going to do. You can't talk me out of it. There it was. There was the ultimatum that would shape everything in our future. Our marriage would change from this point forward. She hadn't thought it far enough along to see that being unfaithful, even though you're announcing it beforehand, is a marriage breaker. Now my plan had to take shape. Okay, here are my conditions. They are not negotiable. I laid out what she would have to do if she wanted to fuck around on me. You will move out while you do this. I will not live in the same house with you while you date and have sex with other men. If you thought that you were going to bring them here, then you can think again. That is not going to happen. Honey, where am I supposed to live? I suppose you can stay with one of your friends. How about that woman, Jessica, from school that you were chummy with? You've been spending a lot of time with her. You told me that she was divorced and is alone. Call her and ask her if you can stay with her for a while. If that isn't possible, you can rent a short-term apartment somewhere. You will be responsible for the expenses and utilities and your car payment. Andrea was a teacher. She taught grade 3 at the elementary school. She made a good income. I was a chartered accountant working for a big firm as a forensic auditor and made a good income along with annual bonuses. From what you said, I guess that I'm not giving you everything that you need in our relationship right now. Andrea's head came up, and for the first time she looked me in the eye. She figured that I was giving in, and that she had won the battle. I went on, so if you want an open marriage, then I suppose I will have to be patient while you have your affairs. Are you going to come home to me at the end of all this, Andrea? Honey, of course I am. I love you very much. You're my husband. I want us to have a family. And what am I supposed to do while you are out having sex with other men? Are you expecting me to be faithful to you? Do you expect me to sit at home and wait for you to get done fucking your boyfriends and then welcome you with open arms and love when you come back? Is that what you think will happen, Andrea? Have you thought at all, even a little bit, what this is going to do to me? I want you as my husband, honey, and only you. Whatever I do while I'm away from you for the next little bit will not mean anything after I come home to you. I want you to be my husband and the father of my children. Hmm. I thought to myself that this was an odd way to show it. She had already accepted the fact that I wasn't going to just let her parade her boyfriends into our house and have sex under my nose. I suppose she figured that was win for her. She gets to go party with other men without fear of me interfering. Okay, you figure out where you are going to stay and let me know this week. Right now, we need to do some things here to start. I want you to move your clothes and things to the spare bedroom. I'm not sure that I can share the same bed with you just now. Your plan is too hurtful. 
I feel like you are leaving me, but just haven't said as much, so you tell me what I should think. Andrea didn't answer me, and I figured that she was starting to realize that I was not going to blindly take this. She might have been surprised that I wanted her out of our bed. But what the hell did she expect? She must have thought me a complete stupid chump to figure that I was going to meekly let her run out and screw around and then believe that she was going to come home and pretend that we were a happy couple and have children and carry on with a normal life. Nope. Andrea was friendly with another teacher, Jessica, and I reckoned that the source of some of this stupidity might be her. Jessica was divorced, a grade 4 teacher at the same school where my wife taught. She had been caught by her husband fucking around with several lovers and he bounced her ass out the door two years ago. Jessica was 35 years old and a good-looking woman with a great body. Her downfall is that she likes to spread her legs for any man that smiles at her. I had a suspicion that Jessica was the influence behind Andrea's desire to explore herself before we had a family. The reality for me was that if she explored too much there was not going to be a family, at least not with me. The only thing there would be was a divorce. I got up from the table and started to walk away. Andrea asked, Is that it, Rob? You want me to move out? Yeah, that's it for now. Don't get me wrong, Andrea. I do not want you to do this at all. We made a promise of monogamy to each other when we got married. You're planning on breaking that promise, so what is it that you expect me to do? Do you expect me to sit quietly while you have sex with other men? If you want an open marriage, then I suppose I get to do the same. Andrea was speechless and I left before things escalated to a shouting match. I got my car keys and started to leave the house. Honey, where are you going? I'm not sure right now, but don't forget to move your things to the spare room and start looking for that place to stay. Remember that you don't get to fuck around on me and our marriage until you move out. I turned and left shutting the door a lot more forcefully than I normally did. If push came to shove, I was fully prepared to be the one to leave, but since my wife was the one initiating this fucked up affair then she could be the one to have to be inconvenienced. Besides, I figured that it was that slut Jessica that was encouraging Andrea to do this so she could be the one to take her in. I had to put aside my desire to drive to Jessica's apartment and punch the bitch in the nose. Monday morning I was up and left my office before Andrea got up. I had a lot of work to do on my plan if things went according to Andrea's intentions. I was not going to tolerate her cheating on me. Since she appeared to have made up her mind and our marriage then I had to get to work. I was hurt by the fact that she thought she could have sex outside out marriage and that I was stupid enough to stand by, let her do it, and then pretend it was all good if, and when, she came home. And what if she comes home with some disease, or pregnant, or both? Nope, not gonna happen. Step one was a call to my lawyer. My lawyer was a friend of mine that handled the more mundane business that we needed a lawyer to handle, real estate, wills, that sort of thing I didn't figure that he would handle the divorce work but would be able to refer me to a lawyer that does. He did. There was a good divorce attorney at the firm and my meeting with her was scheduled for that afternoon. It was a difficult meeting, but my new lawyer was a skilled litigator and fully aware of the laws in our state. I didn't want to make this a difficult divorce. In fact, I was very happy with a 50-50 division of all our assets. Neither one of us had much when we got married and we both had been working full-time to build on our ability to live comfortably and have a family, until now. So I was happy to split things down the middle. I'm not a completely heartless prick. Also fighting for assets would only increase the timelines of the divorce. The assets are not worth staring at a cheating wife. The paperwork would be drawn up and then held until I had proof that my wife was indeed fucking other men. Until then this was just a preliminary move on my part. The week was slow to go by. I made a point of spending as little time as possible at home and went out every evening, mostly to the gym to burn off stress. I noticed that Andrea was spending a lot of time with Jessica and she announced on the Thursday that she would be staying with her for a couple of weeks until she could find another more suitable place. I knew it would be a convenient place where she could fuck her boyfriends and not have to worry about being interrupted by me. Jessica would likely be entertaining her boyfriends at the same time, so it would be a real party. Jesus, this was fucked up. On Saturday, my wife of five years and one week confirmed for me her decision to have sex outside of our marriage by packing her things in her car and leaving. She stopped just before she left. Honey, I don't want to go. Are you sure we can't work something out so I can stay? I love you a lot and I really want our marriage to be better. My God, Andrea, if you loved me at all and wanted our marriage to be better, you would not go through with this. Yes. I want you to stay here at home with me, but I will not allow you to fuck other men while you are my wife. I love you, but I'm just not going to stand for that. 
please come with me to marriage counseling to try to sort out what the problems are. But if you won't do that, then I don't know what I can say. So, go. As she was loading her things in her car, I got in my car and went off to the hardware store to go get new locks for the house. I changed three locks on the house and changed the security code on the garage door opener. Saturday night and all of Sunday, I sat at home staring at the four walls hoping that Andrea would come to her senses and come home. The next week was brutally hard on me. I went to the gym every day that week and took up running again to try and reduce my stress level. By times I was terribly depressed and wanted to go to her and beg her to come home. Intellectually, I was still having difficulty fathoming the idea that my wife was leaving me to have sex with other men while we stayed married. I felt like giant failure. Was I that useless that my wife was willing to rub her infidelity in my face? I guess so. I went on the internet to research the psychology of cheating and why spouses cheat on each other. I was amazed to learn that about 40% of all married people cheat on their spouse. I was also amazed to learn that of that group almost 90% stay in the marriage. Cheating by one or both spouses is most often quietly tolerated by the other partner. Often there are children to be considered and it is easier for the other spouse to just accept the infidelity if it is discreet and continue as if it were not happening. Wives who cheat, for the most part, say that they love their husbands and families but are looking for excitement outside the marriage. Excitement that they are not getting at home. A lot of the women who have affairs say that home is a lot of work where the day-to-day -day grind of keeping a family afloat with all the activities that kids are involved in and the mundane work that occupies their daily lives makes sex and intimacy with their husbands boring. Women want to feel excitement with their lover who is concentrating on them alone and not talking about kids or errands right after sex. Maybe the key to marriage success was to treat your wife like a cheating spouse but without the divorce part. Just enjoy the sex. Maybe I should go and try to pick up my wife at the club that she and Jessica will go to? People cheat on their spouses for a lot of reasons. Lack of sex in the relationship, no passion, no connection between the wife and husband anymore and revenge for the other partner having cheated. Some women have said that they cheat on their husbands to save their marriages. I'm not sure about that one. But that's what they have said to researchers who have studied marital cheating. Marriage is complex and relationships take work. Open marriages, where it is known by both spouses that they will have other relationships and sex partners, seldom ever survive in the long term. Emotional bonds are formed, and feelings get hurt eventually, and most will divorce. Polyamorous marriages are equally fraud and complex. This is especially so if there are children to be considered. There is always the problem of an STD being introduced into the relationship, so that is a constant threat. My own belief was that monogamy was best in a marriage, and if both partners did not agree with that, then they should not be married. They should look for a different person to be married to, or to be in relationship with. Did I ignore my wife and drive her away? Did I forget to pay enough attention to her while I was doing what I thought I needed to do to build a life for us? Was I wrong? I don't know. I do know that I was unhappy that my wife had left our home to go have sex with other men. She was looking for the things that I supposedly didn't give her. I didn't see her strategy as leading to an improvement in our marriage. And so the next week went by slowly again. I did not call my wife once and Andrea only texted me once to ask me to forward her mail to her there. She had nothing to say to me that gave any indication that she wanted to stay married. It was all business. Clearly, she was getting on with her plan to find a boyfriend, or two, to have fun with. I thought about following her from the apartment to wherever she and Jessica went, to see who she was meeting. I drove by the apartment several times but didn't stop and decided that I couldn't do that to myself. I had to let her make the decision otherwise she would never be my wife again. The longer that this went on the less chance there was that she was ever coming home to me. The other part of that equation was that the longer she took to come back the less likely it was that I was going to want her. A month went by, and with little communication between us, Andrea showed up unannounced at the house. When her key didn't work, she rang the doorbell and knocked on the door. I went to the door. Andrea, what brings you here today? Honey, my key doesn't seem to work in the lock. What is going on with that? That's because I changed all the locks. I said the words with a deadpan expression on my face. Andrea started to come in the house, but I stood in the way to block her. What do you want, Andrea? I came to get a few of my things that I forgot when I moved in with Jess. Again, she didn't come here to see me. It was about her stuff and purely business. She didn't really care about me or what she was doing to me. The hurt that I might have been experiencing was not even a consideration for her. I was clearly just getting in her way. Was she that foolish or delusional to think that I wouldn't care about her sexual activities with other men and eventually take her back? 
There are some boxes in the garage with things that are yours that I collected up around the house. Why did you do that, honey? I'm coming home in a few months, so there is no need to pack all of my things. I let her in the house. It was after all still half hers. We went to the garage and she could see that there was a dozen or more boxes of things ready for her to take. How long are you going to live with Jessica? She has been really great. I'm going to stay with her for a while. I'm sure that this will only be for a few more months and then I will be back and I'll be an even better wife to you, honey. Then we can make a baby or two and be a family. I rolled my eyes at that comment and did an internal grimace. Yeah, right? I want sure just how her fucking other men would make her a better wife and prepare her to be a mother. But somewhere in her twisted logic, probably implanted by that bitch Jessica, that is what she wanted to believe. Surely, she knew that what she said was bullshit. I had other ideas on the whole business. So, have you found a boyfriend yet? Andrea blushed red at my question. I knew the answer immediately. Jess and I have been out on some dates with guys from the club that we go to, but that's all. How's the sex with your new boyfriends? Her face was still red, and she busied herself looking through the boxes for the stuff that she wanted. I knew the answer to that question, so I left the garage and went back to the kitchen to have my coffee and read the newspaper. A few minutes later, she came out with a big bag of things and looked around the kitchen. I suppose she was expecting the house to look like a mess with her gone. It was just the opposite. I had hired a maid service to come in three times a week to clean the place, and so it looked spotless. She was noticeably disappointed by the lack of clutter. No giant stack of dirty dishes, no pile of empty beer bottles, no mountain of dirty laundry. No, the house was doing just fine, and I was working at keeping myself together so that I didn't lose my mind as I fester on the idea that my wife had left me to go fuck other men. Is there anything else you need, Andrea? I could tell that she wanted to find out what was going on here without her. So honey, have you been okay since I began staying with Jess? I'm fine. I've been busy with work. I'm on the road a lot. Honey, are you getting out at all or just staying home here by yourself? There it was. The great question that I expected eventually. What did I say earlier? What is good for the goose is good for the gander. Time for me to drop a small grenade in her basket and see how she handles it. I've been trying to keep busy. I joined a cycling group that meets twice a week for organized rides. We meet at a start point and ride as a group for 40 to 60 miles. It's a lot of fun. I've been meeting lots of new people there. They're a great bunch. We usually go to someplace after for a beer and a burger. Riding that far works up your hunger. Between exercising and the stress that she was causing me, I had dropped 15 pounds in the last few weeks. Getting lots of exercise was probably the only thing that saved me from a mental breakdown. I made point of staying away from too much alcohol. That would not help me at all. That's nice. She said it with a tone that might suggest she was more interested in what I was doing than her response suggested. My takeaway from that was that she wanted to know if I was meeting other women. I figured that as Andrea drove away from the house, she began to think that her plan wasn't working out quite as she had figured. Maybe her loyal husband might just meet another woman and decide that he didn't need to stay married to her. Maybe her plan to find a boyfriend to give her the attention that her husband had not been might have bigger consequences than she thought. I found out that Andrea had been dating two guys from the club that she and Jessica went to and had sex with both of them a few times, but so far they were not interested in her to the point that they wanted to spend quality time with her after a few hours between her legs. Both the guys were happy to take off from Jessica's apartment after they had screwed her. Once they were done, both would tell her that they had to go. Both were married and were just out looking for a good time. Andrea was that good time. Pump and dump. At the two-month point I knew that my marriage was done, and I had to start with the next phase of my plan. Andrea had not contacted me for weeks, so I knew that she wasn't thinking about me or our marriage at all. She was doing whatever it was that she wanted and hadn't expressed any interest or intent to come home. If she did, there would be a whole bunch of conditions attached, and even then, I wasn't sure that I was going to take her. And for a good reason beyond what she was doing. I found out that she and one of her boyfriends had taken a vacation to Dominican Republic during the school break. They had a little getaway to the sun and sand to work on their suntans and other things. So, if that was her idea of making our marriage stronger through infidelity, well? The crap that Jessica had been selling to Andrea about what a bad husband I had been and how I had ignored my wife had resonated with Andrea before she decided to abandon our marriage. Now she was sharing a two-bedroom apartment with her disgruntled divorcee friend and her reputation amongst the other teachers and her family was going downhill. When Andrea's mother learned that she had gone off to the Caribbean with another man, she called me asking why we had separated. She probably figured that we had been fighting. 
When I told her that her daughter had left me to go and have sex with other men, she was stunned and didn't believe me. I told her to talk to Andrea herself and find out the truth. Her mother called her. Andrea, why did you move out from your home? What is going on with you and Robert? Is he hurting you? No, mom. He isn't harming me, but he doesn't give me the excitement that I need from a man right now. Rob doesn't make me feel desirable. I need that feeling. I need to feel wanted. I don't feel attractive to him. So I need to feel that from someone else right now. I want to have a bit of fun before Rob and I start a family. I need to do this right now then in a few months I'll go back to him when he will appreciate me more and it will all be good. You'll see. Andrea's mother was floored by what she said. Dear, if you have sex with other men Robert is not going to want you as a wife. Cheating on him is the best way to end your marriage. Don't you understand that? I know that Rob loves me mom. He understands that I need to do this. I'll go back home in a few months, maybe a year at the most, and then we will have babies. Andrea, dear, you need to wake up and go home now, or there won't be a marriage or a husband to go home to. And there certainly won't be any babies with him. Do you understand me? Mom, I know that Rob loves me. I know what I'm doing. Even her mother couldn't talk some sense into her. So in that good for the goose, good for the gander way of thinking, I had decided that I was going to see if I was ready for a life. It was now about three months since Andrea left and it was time that I got on with my life. I got up the courage to ask one of the women that I cycled with for a date. I just wanted some female companionship and a change from the routine that I had been enduring. Since my wife had moved out my daily routine was work, the gym, cycling and sleep. Repeat tomorrow, wait for the nonsense to end. That was it. A part of me wished that Andrea would come to her senses, stop this nonsense and come home. But that wasn't happening. I had to face the facts. She was not likely coming back, at least not the wife that I had married or the woman that I thought I knew. I guess she was enjoying her new freedom and finding the excitement and validation as a woman that was missing from our marriage. The things that the psychologists say is the motivation for married women to cheat on their husbands. So, I tried to get a date without making it look like I was super needy and was just hitting on someone. That might be too weird, I know. I wanted to get to know the people in my cycling group and have them get to know me before inviting one of the women for a date. I wanted this to not be a pity date. My cycling friends pretty much knew that I was separated from my wife, and I'm sure that some might have even known that Andrea was actively dating other men. This was not that big a city, and people know other people, and the juicy gossip gets around eventually. When I asked a woman named Diane out for drink and bite to eat, I was surprised when she accepted my invitation. I wanted to go out on Saturday night to a nice place that would be casual and relaxed and not read too much into it. Before we would eat, I had planned for us to go kayaking on the lake near the city. I had kayaked quite a bit a few years ago so knew how to do things. I asked Diane if she had kayaked, and while she had not before, I told her that it's a lot of fun. She said that she would really like to try it. So, it was a date. The food and a drink would come after the activity. It turned out to be a great time. Diane enjoyed the kayaking. We only went about 10 miles on the water taking about 3 hours. Then it was off to a nice restaurant for a good plate of food and a drink. I like beer so had a steak with some french fries and a good local craft beer. Diane likes white wine and ate a pasta dish. Low key and formal and no pressure. After we finished up, we got some ice cream at a stand on the waterfront boardwalk. I drove her home and told her that I had a great time. I was going to give her a kiss on the cheek but she leaned in and planted a kiss on my lips. It was great and unexpected. I didn't want to appear too eager so waited until I saw her at the regular Tuesday cycle meetup to arrange another date. She surprised me a bit when she said that when I didn't call her that she thought that I didn't have a good time. I was quick to tell Diane that it was just the opposite. I had a great time and really enjoyed what we did and especially being with her. We made a date for Saturday. This time to play golf. I saw on the internet that if you want to have someone be interested in you, there is a fine line about too much texting and calling. Men who text and call women all the time are thought to be too needy, so women will shy away from them when they see that kind of behavior. So, I sent Diane a text on Friday, saying that I was looking forward to playing golf with her on Saturday, and what time I would pick her up if she liked. That gave her the option of meeting me at the golf club if she preferred. She told me to please pick her up, so we set the time for the early afternoon. We had a great time on the golf course. Neither one of us will ever be a pro golfer, but we had lots of fun. That night we ate dinner at my place. We barbecued and had a bottle of wine. After dinner and when it was late, I got ready to drive her home, but she took the car keys from my hand and put them on the kitchen counter and asked to see the bedroom. The next morning, 
I woke up to a gorgeous woman with her arm draped over my chest. Diane has dark, luxuriant long hair, beautiful green eyes and skin that is flawless. She has a tiny scar on her chin from a bicycle accident, but it lends character to her beautiful face. She is tall, about 5 feet 11 inches and slender. She might weigh 140 pounds soaking wet and is in awesome shape. She works as a nurse at the hospital in the child pediatric department. Everything she does says that she has compassion for people. She comes across as genuine. She has a certain magnetism about her that attracted me to her as soon as I met her. We had breakfast on my patio, and then the talk turned to me and my plans and was I going to divorce. That was a touchy subject because I could see where it was going. Diane wanted to know what my plans were before she would invest emotionally in me. That was a reasonable request. What woman wants to spend time getting to know a man that is only going to take back his estranged wife in a few weeks? When I explained to Diane the bizarre way that Andrea had explained why she was leaving, her face told me what I had already known. She figured that Andrea was not coming back. I think I needed that little nudge to move on to the next part of my plan. Monday morning, I called my lawyer and had her get her investigator on the case. I wanted to know how many men she was having sex with before dropping the divorce papers on her. She was dating a series of guys, mostly married, and they were going back to Jessica's apartment to party after leaving various bars and clubs around the city. Two weeks later, Andrea was served with the divorce petition. That's when the fun began. She drove to the house that night to see me. I answered the doorbell. It was my estranged wife, and she was clutching a large brown envelope. She had a distressed look on her face. Andrea, what brings you here tonight? Honey, a guy delivered these documents to me today. Why did you file for divorce? I told you that I would be home soon. I even know about coming home this week. We can start working on that baby that we talked about. I asked her to come in and have a seat in the kitchen. It's a bit late for that, Andrea. I told you when you left that I didn't want you to go, but you went anyway. Honey, I told you that I need to find out who I was and feel good about myself. I had a small laugh. So, do you feel good about yourself? Are you validated enough as a woman? Have you explored your sexuality enough? Have you explored new relationships? Have you met exciting people? Have you had big enough dicks in your glory hole and mouth? I was starting to rant. Cause it sure looks to me like you have. I have had virtually no communication from you since you left our home. You didn't call me on my birthday. That's because you were screwing one of your boyfriends in the Dominican Republic that week. Your mother called me and wondered why you didn't even call her on Mother's Day. Jesus, have you spent the entire time on your back getting drilled? Honey, I love you very much and I can see that I might have gone a bit too far so, I'm coming home today. Whoa. No, you're fucking not. Honey, what are you talking about? I'm still your wife and this is still my house too. So I'm coming home today. I'm going back to Jess' place and get my things and I will be home in a few hours. Ah. Oh. No, you're not. Did you read through all the documents in that package you got? At the back, you'll see a judge's order telling you that you are not to come more than 500 feet from this house until such time as the divorce is finalized. So, right now you're technically in violation of the court order. Now I'm not going to complain, but you need to leave here, and we can see each other in court to sort out the details. Andrea was beginning to realize that I was serious about our wedding vows. Things like love, honor, cherish, faithfulness, and that little part about not fucking around with other men. This house means nothing to me, Andrea. If you want it, that's fine. It's almost paid for, so my half is worth about $150,000. For that small sum, it can be all yours. If you don't want to spend that kind of money, we will sell it and split the proceeds of the sale. It's that simple. But right now, you are not moving back, at least not while I'm here. I ushered her to the door, shut it behind her, and locked it. A month later, we avoided the necessity of a visit to court and quietly settled the divorce. Andrea got half of everything we had. She was, after all, legally entitled to it. The house was sold. I moved on. Andrea went back to her new routine. I heard through a friend that the school where she taught, it's a charter school, had counseled her keep her social life a bit more low-key. Seems that some of the parents knew that she was seeing a number of men in the area and were not keen to have her teaching their children. It was mostly the mothers of the kids doing the complaining, and they were, in private, more forthright about the skank that was teaching their kids. Some of the fathers of the children might have been her lovers. She was later diagnosed with a sexually transmitted disease, not a deadly one, but one that meant no sex for about a year. That wasn't really a big issue since she was pregnant anyway. Seems that one of her lovers had done the job. She had gotten careless about taking her birth control pill too much alcohol too often, and she didn't make the men who fucked her wear a condom. 
The father was not identified but looked mysteriously like one of the teachers at her school, a married teacher. My divorce was finalized, and I was free of Andrea. It's now about a year since all the nonsense with Andrea started. I bought a new house, got a promotion in my work, and the most important part, Diane and I are living together. And we are proud to announce two things. One, we are getting married this summer. And two, we are going to be parents by about Christmas. Dear listeners, please share your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.